Okay. Uh, I'm going to be doing this video in sections um, just because it's kind of big. Uh, basically, I was asked how to uh, quantize drums or, or basically time stretch drums um, so everything lines up and is a smooth tempo. And as we get into this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but it's just going to be kind of long, so I'm going to do this in sections. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is get Cubase open, and this is the song that has been provided to me. And I need to open this one because the other one wouldn't open, unfortunately. And we'll wait for Cubase to launch, and then we will start explaining what we need to do. So we'll just wait a minute here. I uh, own quite a few plugins, so this uh, usually takes a bit of time, but it's not too bad. Um, apologize for the dryer in the background. I'm in the basement, and this mic is really, really touchy. Uh, so, kind of can't be helped. I suppose I could get a dynamic out, but a boundary is easier in terms of uh, doing this. I can just throw it on the desk and okay. So I don't own this plugin, so Cubase is telling me, "Hey, we can't find it," and that's fine because I don't have it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this so we can get a comfortable idea of what we're looking at and um, I've opened this before um, the one thing I did do um, unfortunately I saved it but he had it um, he had it placed over here um, he also doesn't work um, I forget what this is called but he doesn't work in this mode he, uh, he had it to time code so it looked like this um, and that's that you know that's fine but for this we will be working in bars and beats um, and I leave this uh, usually to seconds or time code but um, seconds is fine okay so the first thing I did was moved it to the left because I'm gonna have to do that anyways and um, I'm not entirely sure I'm assuming that these are the drums that we're stretching and this has nothing to do with anything and this looks like vocals um, so we'll leave that alone for now um, we'll just make sure to uh, deal with it after the fact um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire section and we're going to tell Cubase um, how to or basically what the, what the tempo of it is and I, I'm doubting that it's 120 but let's let's see if it is Hopefully that's loud enough. Oh, let's get there. Right, I'm going to go ahead and say definitely not, as you can hear. Okay, so we're definitely not 120. And this is fine. I just wanted to make sure that that was the case. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is move the move these two folders out of here because we don't want to accidentally do anything with them. They'll, they'll, that'll come later. Uh, the first thing we need to do before we even get going on anything um, is I really hope uh, Jimmy has all his edits in order because um, I really need this to be one solid chunk of audio <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, what we first need to do is we need to go up to audio after we've selected all of our regions like you just showed what well, like I just showed you I just selected them all and we need to bounce the selection now before I do that just to make sure I am gonna hit X on all these and just make sure that they're crossfaded um, you know because that would be kind of a bummer and uh, I usually go with something well it won't let me so we'll, we'll, we'll you know let it do its thing Let's see how uh, 
Oh yeah, those are pretty minuscule. They should be fine. Uh, so once we've done that, um, I really need to make this all one chunk of audio. So we're going to go to audio bounce selection. And like I said, I really hope that these are good to go. And yes, we are going to replace the, the events. So we'll wait for Cubase to do that. It takes a little bit of time. It's usually pretty quick. Here we go. And now what we're looking at, this is just visually a lot easier to deal with, um, is the reason. Now the, and it'll also render all your fades too. When I say render, it's basically like a bounce in place. So the first thing that we need to do with the click track off is figure out where beat one is. I've found that that's the easiest rather than dragging the timeline and having a weird measure before everything starts. Um, so we'll just play this and figure it out. I will show you the slow way and then I will show you the fast way. We might have to turn these up. Yeah, let's turn them up. bring this over here. I have two monitors. Okay, these are already pretty pretty up there. So I guess I'll just turn up the stereo out. Call it good. Um, so I'm guessing it looks like beat one isn't even within the drums. So what I'm going to do since there is no reference to where beat one happens other than you know, in the drums, there's no reference to where beat one starts. The first measure starts, excuse me, not beat one. Um, I'm going to chop everything off up to it, and you'll see why in a minute. This is to make space so I can move it to the left. So we'll just collapse these for now because um, I have a feeling that beat one is probably down in the guitars. So let's find out where it starts. Yep, there it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit um, Apple plus A, and I'm not entirely sure what that is on PC. I think that's maybe Windows A. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Uh, basically, it's select all. So if you go up to edit and uh, you hit select all, excuse me, what the heck is it? Why can't I find it? Anyways, it <laughs> for whatever reason I can't find it. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean the edit window is beeping when I hit it. So it ha Oh, right here, I'm an idiot. Select all, so whatever this keyboard shortcut is that's what you know that's what I'm using it's a lot faster than going through that menu um, we're gonna select all and we're going to slide this over to measure one and I actually usually go right down to the wave file I'll select none I'll drag this up because the note pretty much starts there do a slight fade select all again and drag it back and drag it back <laughs> and drop it on B1 um, we'll just cover setting this up before we dive into it I'll do that in a separate video because like I said this is going to be long and uh, I didn't really do any writing for it I'm just kind of flying by the cuff so we found our beat one or excuse me measure one and it actually sounded like it was two. So what we're going to do is we're just going to count it. Because um, we need to find out where, um, you know, where the measures are. So, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. See how that works? So basically... I didn't count like an idiot. 
So let's actually count that time and, and find out uh, where the best place to map the uh, measure that we need. And this will make sense. Uh, I'm not really explaining it too well, but I promise this will make sense here in a minute. So two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five. Okay, so measure five is going to land on whatever that downbeat is right around here. And I usually like to... This is your zoom in on wave file, by the way, up here. You're not... This isn't clipping. This is you're literally zooming in on the wave file. So it looks like... Whoa. It looks like this is your gonna is going to be our measure five. And that's usually what I do when there isn't too many cues. Um, so let's just make sure that that's the case. And two, bam. Yeah, that's that's the down B right there. So since we know that that's measure five, uh, we're going to move on to the next step, which I will cover in the next video. Um, but this is the starting point. And uh, stay tuned for for you know video two. I'll uh, link it in the description.